Okay, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk about prime factorization. And before I get started, prime factorization, I'm going to talk in this lesson about prime numbers. I'm going to talk about composite numbers. This is going to lead me to prime factorization. And in my next video, I will talk about least common multiples. And I've already have two videos on greatest common factors. Now, prime factorization. So what we need to do is we need to think about actually what prime really means. We also need to talk about um, what a composite number means. So, let's think about prime numbers. And I want to write down a few, and I want you all to, to think about other numbers that are prime. Now, a misconception with prime numbers what I've seen in the past has been that they're odd numbers, and that's not true. So let's see, part A, I'm gonna start naming some prime numbers. Okay, so prime numbers cannot be broken down besides one in itself. So a good definition is cannot be broken down other than one times itself. So let's think about some examples. Two. Two is just broken down to one and two. And this one I'm showing you is going to be part of the uh, prime factorization. Okay? Let's look at three. What about five? What about seven? Eleven. And I can keep going on and on and on. Maybe we'll do 29. Skip around a little bit. Maybe 41. So there's a whole list of these numbers that can be prime that are cannot be um, broken down any farther than one in itself. That's what I mean. Okay? So this leads me into composite numbers. Now, composite numbers are broken down other than one times itself. So, in these examples, notice be two, three, I've skipped four. I've skipped six. So let's look at four. Four can be broken down into one times four and also two times two. Six can be broken down to one in itself and two times three. 
Think of eight. One times eight and two times four. Let's pick another one. Let's do 20. 20 could be one times 20. It can also be two times 10. Now it's going to be four times five. And I'll pick another one. Uh, let's do 36. One times 36. Two times 18. Three times 12. Four times nine. And six times itself. Now I'm going to show you one little pattern. When we start getting these numbers, these composite numbers, that tend to have a lot of different factors. Notice something. I'm doing this in numerical order. I'm counting one, two, three, four, and I don't have for five. But notice this. Now, once it gets to right here, notice that this gap, in this case, doesn't have a big gap because it's a perfect square. And then it goes back up. So these are all your factors. You can do this with 20. Take a look at two, one, two, four. Now, notice my last thing, four and five. That means there's no numbers in between there. I'll do one more example of this just to show you this little a connection between factors and the last factors. Let's try 48. 48 can be 1 and 48, 2 and 24. Notice I'm doing this, like I said, 1 and 2 right here. Let's try 3 and 16, 4 and 12. Now, 5 doesn't have 1, but 6 and 8. So that means right here... The only number between 6 and 8 is 7. Well, 7 times 7 is 49. It's close to being 48, but that means we stop right here. So this leads to prime factorization. Now, at any point in this video, you can always stop, pause, go back, and see, you know, if you're a little confused on prime numbers or composite numbers, or here in a minute when I'm getting ready to st uh, start this prime factorization. Okay, now, let's try, let's go ahead and try 12, for example, okay? Now, here's my example number one, 12. How can 12 be broken down? Well, some of us can say, okay, and now when you use prime factorization, do not use one. I'm going to say, do not use one times itself. Okay? So think about 12. 12 can be broken down to, some of us are going to use 2 and 6. And the others can might use 3 and 4. And notice I'm putting a little multiplication symbol because that's what it, what we're doing is we're multiplying. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach this uh, left side first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down my 2 because I cannot break down 2 anymore. But notice this. I can break down the 6 to 2 times 3. So the correct answer would be 2 times 2 times 3 or, now some of us may have to put, use exponents in our answer. So to use exponents, how many twos do, I, do you see? Two, and then times three. This is what prime factorization is. It just depends on what format you're asked to put your answer in. So let's go to this other side, okay? I'm going to bring down the three. Now, 4 is the same as 2 times 2. Now, notice this. 
I've got two times two times three. I'm putting in numerical order. So this can be your correct answer, or you got two, two, so it's two squared times three. Now notice something about this. Both answers are the same. So you can use either way to break down, in this case, 12. Okay, let's, let's do this one. Let's use... How about 15? Well, in this case, besides 1 and 15, you can only break it down to 3 times 5. Now, notice you can't break down the 3 anymore or the 5, so your correct answer would be 3 times 5. Another popular one is 24. Okay, 24. Now, 24 can be broken down to maybe 2 times 12. Some of us may use 3 times 8, and others may use 4 times 6. Personally, I do not care which way you approach it as long as you show me breaking down all your answers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here on the left side first. Cannot break down the 2, but now 12 can be broken down into maybe... 2 times 6. Some of us may use 3 times 4. I'm just picking 1, 2 times 6. Bring down my 2. Bring down my other 2. Now this 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3. Now notice I'm putting little multiplication marks in here so I do not get confused as maybe 22 or 23. Now for this answer, prime factorization could be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Or it can be how many twos do we have? We have three, so it's two to the third power times three. And if you want to check your work, two times two times two is eight, times three is 24. Now, I cannot break down the three, but my eight, I can break down to two times four. Three stays the same, two stays the same, and then four breaks down to two times two. Now notice here, I've got my th uh, three twos. And my three. And finally, up at the very top, the fours can be broken, the four can be broken down to two times two. The 6, 2 times 3. I cannot break that down anymore. Now take a look at this. 2 times 2 times 2. That's also 2 to the 3rd times 3. So I've shown you three different ways how to approach 24. What about 100? Well, right off the bat, I'm thinking, okay, that's a perfect square. That's 10 times 10. I'll do one more. Some of us may use maybe 2 times 50. Now, you can also use, I mean, if you're looking at this, you can use 4 uh, times 25 as well. So I'm going to do the 10 times 10 which is 2 times 5 times another 2 times 5. So this answer would be 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Or I've got two twos and I've got two fives. Now, the, the 2 cannot be broken down anymore. But the 50 can be broken down to maybe 2 times 25. The 2's I bring down. And then 25 breaks down to 5 times 5. Now notice here I've got two 2's and two 5's. It's the exact same answer.
and I'll throw in one more, maybe 148. Now, if it's a number like this, and if I'm seeing it's an, an even number, I would just say two right at the bat. Okay. Now, if this was a, well, I'll show you. An, I'll show you one more for number six here in a minute to show you another approach as well. But since this is an even number, I'm gonna just split it in half, and I'm gonna make that a seventy-four. Twos I cannot do anything with. Okay, since this is a four, I'm gonna also split it in half. And I'm going to get 37. Now, 37 is prime. So my answer to this one is going to be 2 squared, because I've got 2 of them times 37. Number 6, I'll just put it right beside it. Maybe you have a number like say 155. So I'm looking at that five and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to cut it by five. So I'm going to say, how many times does five go into 155? Well, five goes into 15 three times. And then one. So 5 times 31 is 155. Now notice I cannot break that down anymore. So this would be your answer. And I don't know, maybe we have something like 280. Well, if I see a 0, I'm thinking about the same thing with the 5, except with a 0, I'm going to say, I'm going to split this down to 10 and 28. Ten is two times five. Okay, twenty-eight is four times seven. I bring down my two, bring down my five, my four splits to two times two, then I bring down my seven. So my answer to this would be I've got one, two, three, twos. I've got a five, I've got a seven. And finally, this is going to back because I get this question all the time. Okay. Is one a prime or a Composite. So we've talked about, I'm going to let you all think about this. We've talked a lot about the prime, what makes a prime number, and also what makes a composite number. So this is a, a perfect example of one that you could get asked a lot about about so this is sort of a trick question and the answer is going to be this is a good one to remember it's it's going to be neither now i'm going to go back all the way to the top here to explain so we've talked about prime numbers we've talked about composite numbers prime factorizations. My next video will be least common multiples. And then I've also got two videos already made of greatest common factors. So thank you for listening.